climate change, food shortages, pollution, and the rapid depletion of natural resources are threatening our ecosystem and our very survival. And this situation will only get worse as we continue to generate billions of tons of waste each year. But one university in Singapore has stepped up to help change things. A global leader in sustainability, Nanyang Technological University Singapore is leading the way through science and innovation. At NTU Singapore, scientists and researchers are collaborating with industry partners, academia and governments to come up with ambitious but practical sustainability solutions for the world. NTU aspires to be a global leader in sustainability. We aim to lead by example and demonstrate habits and behaviours to reduce our carbon footprint. To meet these goals, we are transforming our campus into a living lab. We want the campus to be a powerful platform for testing innovative ideas for sustainability. The university campus is home to many research centres focused on advancing science and technology to address society's pressing needs. One important problem NTU scientists are trying to solve is that of waste management. Each day in Singapore, we throw out more than three kilograms of waste per person. More than 40% of it ends up being incinerated and sent to the landfill at Samakau Island, which is expected to run out of space by 2035. To prolong the lifespan of Samakau Landfill, the National Environment Agency and NTU jointly developed a waste-to-energy research facility. It is where all the rubbish from the NTU campus is delivered to daily and where it all undergoes gasification. This facility was set up in order to see how waste management can be performed better. Recovering materials at higher rate and generating less byproducts such as ash that would ultimately end up in the landfill. The facility operates on high temperature slagging gasification process in which we treat waste at very high temperature. And in a world first, biomass charcoal is added to the waste that is being gasified instead of conventional fossil fuels. Biomass charcoal is more sustainable as it is made from plants and produces less sulfur dioxide emissions. We recover up to 97% of resources and generate 3% fly ash as a final byproduct. This is much lesser compared to conventional process. There are a number of resources that we can recover by gasifying our waste. One is the syngas, which is used for generating electric power. And the second is metal. The third one is slag. Slag is a form of melted ash, which is chemically stable in nature and is being used as a substitute of sand in concrete. So far, the slag has been used in concrete, to construct furniture and the plaza in front of NEA's environment building, as well as the footpaths at Tampanese Hub. Called New Sand, this renewable resource is good for business as well as the environment, and in future, our roads and buildings may be built using it. While the Waste to Energy Research Facility is for handling municipal or household waste, this laboratory in NTU is for tackling one of the fastest growing waste streams, electronic waste. NTU set up this research center known as SCARES, in partnership with the French Alternative Energies and Atomic Energy Commission. With e-waste, the first issue is you cannot landfill them. 
because the toxic elements can seep into the soil and it's an environmental problem. So how do you treat them is the first challenge. The second challenge is how do you treat them in an environmentally friendly way. Yet, in every challenge lies opportunity. Out of 118 elements in the periodic table, 60 of them are found in electronic waste. The concentration of these elements in electronic waste is a lot more than the concentration of the ore. Hence, if we use the concept of urban mining to extract these elements from electronic waste, you not only convert a waste stream into a resource stream, but you also preserve Earth's concentration of elements and the environment. To this end, NTU researchers here have come up with many urban mining solutions. They include an AI-assisted X-ray machine to sort components of printed circuit boards and a novel way to delaminate solar panels to achieve a higher material recovery yield. A key research project is to recycle lithium-ion batteries, which are used in electronic devices, electric vehicles, and energy storage systems. With the increasing demand of electrification, there is a concern that there will be a severe deficit of critical elements like lithium, cobalt, nickel, manganese. So the question is, can we recover some of the elements and then put them back to make new lithium-ion batteries? The current methods of recycling lithium-ion batteries involves extremely high temperatures or using highly concentrated acids. Neither method is eco-friendly. But the NTU team has come up with an alternative. When we were having lunch one day with my colleague, we realized that, hey, can we use uh, orange juice? Everybody knows orange has citric acid. So when we looked at the peels, which was the byproduct of the orange juice vending machine, we said, hey, you know, why don't we try that? We found that this orange peel process is as efficient as the other processes that are out there. And it's totally environmentally friendly. We were able to extract more than 90% of critical elements from used lithium ion batteries. And since we are using a waste stream, our process is 20 to 40 percent lower in cost as compared to other processes that's out there. In early 2023, Professor Madhavi and her colleague, Associate Professor Dalton Tay, collaborated with local battery recycling company, Secure Waste Management, to scale up the technology for recycling spent lithium-ion batteries. The pilot plant allows us to recover valuable metals from the battery scrap at a meaningful scale. The other unique point about this innovation is that we are co-tackling two different waste streams, food waste as well as electronic waste. And in doing so, we are definitely moving a few steps closer to a zero waste nation. In future, this NTU team hopes to do even more for the environment. We've made new batteries out of these materials if these new batteries behave as good as old batteries, then our concept of circular economy is complete. We have finite amount of resources on Earth. Finding ways to refurbish, reuse, recycle these waste and to be able to use them over and over again is very important and is a key to sustainability. While orange peel is put to good use at this NTU laboratory, a lot more food is simply thrown away. In Singapore, food is one of the biggest waste streams. Over the last 15 years, it has grown by more than 40%. One of the most wasteful foods could be one of our favorites. Durians. Up to 80% of each durian ends up in the bin. NTU food scientists have found a way to put discarded durian husks and even its seeds to good use. 
every year there's actually so much durian husk and seed that goes to waste. So we thought, why not make something useful out of it? What we came up with was to use the fibres found in the durian husk. We add glycerol, another waste from uh, biodiesel and soap production to form this hydrogel that is able to be used as a bandage for wound healing. The materials that we use are actually all from food items, so it makes it non-toxic and biocompatible. At NTU, there are many other food waste conversion projects, such as turning prawn shells into sustainable packaging and fish innards into food supplements and using discarded soybean residue to grow mushrooms. These innovative ideas are developed by researchers from NTU's Food Science and Technology Program, a collaborative effort with Wageningen University and Research Centre in the Netherlands. So this is for the natural food preservative? Yes. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. How long, how many days would that take? The Food Science and Technology Program was established at NTU back in 2014. At the time, our government was looking into developing solutions to enhance our national food security. Food waste reduction is a critical component. In Singapore, we generate two bowls of food waste per day per person. And if we consider that we eat about three bowls of food a day, there's a lot of food waste generated. If we do not address this food waste problem, then no amount of food is enough. Creating a food circular economy is critical to enhance our national food security. Towards this end and more, NTU collaborated with Enterprise Singapore to set up the Singapore Agri-Food Innovation Lab, which will drive collaboration and innovation in the agri-food sector. Already, scientists at the university are creating higher-value products from food waste. For instance, in this laboratory, researchers are turning ugly and rotting vegetables into something unexpectedly valuable. We realised that a lot of the vegetables brought to Singapore each day may be bruised and off colour, and uh, therefore they are no longer suitable to be sold in the markets. Can we therefore take some of these vegetables that will be thrown away anyway and convert them into cellulose fibres? Cellulose fibres are indigestible carbohydrates that can be extracted from most plant matter. As cellulose binds and mixes easily with water, it is a popular food supplement to increase one's fibre intake. In 2018, Professor Lu and fellow material scientist Professor Ng Ki Wei made an important discovery about cellulose that can tackle the growing obesity pandemic. We realized that if we were to change the properties of these cellulose fibers in a particular manner and use it as a food ingredient, it can actually help to reduce the absorption of fats in one's diet. So far, we have already proven it in animals. We have seen a 30% reduction in fat absorption. And if we are able to see a similar effect on humans, I think it is going to be something really exciting for us. One of the future plans that we have is actually to work with food companies to explore the possibility of adding these cellulose fibres into different types of food. The duo is confident that their research can contribute towards sustainability in a big way. With NTU's help, they have spun off a startup called Dietrix, which is commercializing the patented technology. One of the key issues with food waste is that they ultimately do end up in the incinerator, and during the process of incineration, it releases a lot of greenhouse gases into our atmosphere. If we're able to extract all the cellulose fibers from food waste, that will really reduce our carbon footprint. While NTU students and professors are finding novel ways to upcycle food waste, alumna Celine Ng is helping startups across the world to develop innovations for the food industry. This analyst at an agri food tech investment firm wants to address sustainability challenges in the global food system. I get to see all these challenges that the food industry is facing on a first hand basis. They include overuse of antibiotics in aquaculture, overuse of chemical herbicides and pesticides in agriculture. 
Being in a venture capital firm, I'm able to bring impact by finding deals that are meaningful and can solve problems of the food industry. Celine so never dreamed she would land a job at an investment firm. She credits her learning experiences at NTU for equipping her with the necessary skills. NTU gives us a flexible and interdisciplinary education that allows us to better prepare for the workplace. They give me an exposure to what's in the real world and in the industry, as well as allows me to develop my networking, my communication, as well as my analytical thinking skills. In fact, Celine's employers were so impressed by her, they offered her a job even before she graduated. She came from NTU with this association with Wageningen University uh, in agriculture and food sciences, so we really like that. But I think more than the technical skills that we thought she would possess, I think more importantly for us is this intellectual curiosity, this desire to learn more beyond conventional wisdom and the idea that you, know, you should challenge that, especially when you're working with companies at the forefront of innovation. An ardent sustainability advocate, Celine is raring to do more to save the environment. I feel really inspired to be able to drive real impact in the food industry and even dream of completely revolutionizing and changing the food system. Singapore wants to ensure a sustainable food future by increasing local production. Our farmers need to innovate to grow more with less in a highly productive, climate resilient and resource efficient way. This is where NTU's strengths as the world's top university in material science and engineering combined with an interdisciplinary research approach to food science and technology is making a big impact. One example is how NTU scientists are helping local fish farmers reduce cost and improve their harvest. The main source of protein in fish feed is actually fish meal. And fish meal is uh, obtained from the fishes that are found in the ocean itself. With the dwindling supply of uh, marine fishes, the cost of fish meal is actually increasing as well. The cost of the fish feed can amount to about 50 to 70% of the cost of farming. Okay, well, about four kg, eh? okay, yeah. Another problem is the low feed conversion efficiency, as fishes don't grow by a kilogram when they are fed a kilogram of feed. Supported by the Singapore Food Agency, NTU's solution for the farmers is a special feed to grow bigger and healthier Asian sea bass, a fish commonly eaten by Singaporeans. Our fish feed contains two different ingredients. One of them is a nutrient, and the second is actually a probiotic that is uh, specifically chosen to target the Streptococcus inia, a pathogen that is commonly found in our waters that tends to afflict the Asian sea bass. We have observed that the addition of the probiotics together the nutrient actually provided with the fish with a lot more disease resistance against the pathogen. And uh, what we are hypothesizing is that the fish will be able to grow a lot faster but the problem with the use of probiotics is that they are very sensitive microorganisms. The moment they are in touch with the acidic environment in our stomach, they tend to be destroyed. What we are doing is to protect them using a special material that is resistant against the gastric juices in the stomach. The moment it goes into the small intestine, because of the change in the environment, the material actually breaks down and it releases all the probiotics there. And that's where the probiotics have the opportunity to actually colonize the guts of the fish, making the fish disease resistant and healthier as well. To test their feed, Professor Liu and his team embarked on an eight-week growth trial at a laboratory on St. John's Island. We were very pleasantly surprised to learn that uh, not only the fish were longer and bigger, but they also weigh a lot more as compared to the fishes that were fed with normal feed. These scientists at NTU have shown us what the future of food and waste could look like. Their innovations are just some examples of the many ongoing efforts in the university's ambitions for sustainability. NTU sees sustainability it's a whole campus effort. We believe that 
everyone has a part to play in sustainability. This is why every student is required to take a course on sustainability as part of our core curriculum. We have world-class academic talent who work very hard to discover and develop solutions to tackle climate change. Our commitment to sustainability won us the 2023 International Sustainable Campus Network Excellent Award in the category of Whole System Approach. Our goal is to accelerate the deployment of solutions that will lead to a sustainable Earth. Our planet is on the brink of climate catastrophe. But it is not too late. If we take climate action now, there is still hope for our world to change. Every action counts and we need all hands on board to really make this world a better place for all of us and for future generations. Find your own area of sustainability where you can most value add to and where you're most interested in. I believe that together, we'll be able to create a more sustainable world. The world is at a crossroads. The choices we made today will determine our path to the future. It is crucial that each of us play a part by taking small steps. For example, conserve energy, saving water, reducing waste, and making greener choices by what we consume. This is behavioral change at the individual level. Each individual action taken collectively as a community has a significant impact on the environment. I often invite people to NTU to experience firsthand how beautiful and sustainable our campus is. I hope that NTU can be an inspiration to everyone. <laughs>